following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up on today's 700 Club, a radio host rushed to the ICU. My heart went into AFib. My kidneys started shutting down. My liver had become compromised. That's where he crashed. They started shoving tubes down my throat. At that point, I had passed out. Doctors told his family to plan for a funeral. It was just almost hopeless at that point. See what got him back on the airwaves. People are praying for me. I just knew it. Later on today's 700 Club. Welcome to the 700 Club. Vladimir Putin's plan to take over Ukraine may be hitting the wall. Russian troops are suffering major defeats, and NATO is expanding on Russia's border. Putin is now threatening retaliation over NATO's expansion. He's moving nuclear weapons to Russia's border with Finland. Jenna Browder reports from Washington. Finland and Sweden are moving forward with their bids to join NATO, a process taking anywhere from four months to a year. Publicly, Russia's Vladimir Putin has said it's no big deal, but his actions suggest otherwise. The two countries announcing plans to join the alliance. Finland's admission would put another NATO nation on Russia's border. In the past, Putin has called the alliance's expansion into Eastern Europe a threat and has threatened retaliation. But when the president of Finland delivered the news in a phone conversation, he said Putin took the news calmly and didn't repeat those threats. What he said uh, doesn't uh, mean that you shouldn't be all the time uh, quite, uh, well, aware and uh, follow up what really is happening. Putin may be talking softly, but he's swinging a big stick. This video showing Russian trucks carrying nuclear weapons to the border with Finland. On the ground in Ukraine, in the ruined city of Mariupol, some 260 wounded fighters holed up in that steel mill have been allowed to leave and taken to Russian-controlled territory. The Ukrainian government is working to secure the release of hundreds more, though it would mean they would become prisoners of war. It comes as Ukrainian troops continue to score more victories, retaking Kharkiv and reaching the Russian border. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky congratulating those troops. The UK now estimates Russia has lost one-third of their ground combat forces. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. The United States and our allies and partners are focused on giving Ukraine as strong a hand as possible on the battlefield and at any negotiating table so that it can repel Russian aggression and fully defend its independence and sovereignty. And the flood of Ukrainian citizens fleeing the fighting is now starting to reverse. The country's border service saying more people have returned to the country than left in recent days. And in another blow to the Kremlin, McDonald's now says it's leaving Russia. The company announcing it plans to sell off all of its business there. In Washington, Jenna Browder, CBN News. Well, George Thomas joins us now. He was in Ukraine covering the war for the first three months and is now safe and, and back home. So, George, tell us, what's the morale like in Ukraine? What's sustaining the people? Yeah, it's incredible, Gordon. I mean, uh, you know, in the initial opening salvo uh, hours of the war, the anticipation, at least from the U.S. intelligence, was that within 72 hours, Kyiv would be encircled. The Russians would control uh, the capital city. The uh, Zelensky government would be decapitated. Well, what are we, day 84 into this war, into Russia's three-day war? And uh, listen, it's, it's, it's unbelievable from Lviv. I went from Lviv, crisscrossed the entire nation all the way to Kramatorsk in eastern Ukraine. And the the morale is so high because just imagine, you know, the Russians were in Bucha and Erpin and Hormostel uh, and Boryadansk. And to imagine that the Ukrainians, with the help of the United States and other NATO allies, were able to, in essence, defeat the world's second largest army, push them back. And today now we're getting these reports that they've pushed them back all the way to the Kharkiv, uh, to the Russian border, uh, bordering Kharkiv. It's incredible. Absolutely amazing story. Well, I've got to ask, can Ukraine actually win this? I mean, nobody expected them to last this long, but now it looks like it, it might even be turning. 
Uh, is there any hope that they could win it? Yeah, I, in fact, they are winning, Gordon. I mean, if you look at the, the, the you know, the, 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 the efforts they've made uh, in the last three months, they've been significant uh, and no one expected this. My prediction is that not only uh, will Ukraine regain territory that it has lost to Russia since the invasion in February 20, on February 24th, but I'm going to predict and say that they are going to reclaim all territory that they lost in the first war back in 2014, including Crimea. And the reason I say that is because the Ukraine of today compared to eight years ago is very different. Uh, they have the military hardware, continues to flow. The weapons continue to flow in from Poland, from other parts of the uh, 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 neighboring of, uh, of Ukraine. So the, the dynamics on the ground have changed significantly. And NATO has said it's going to be open doors from NATO military coming into Ukraine. It's going to be open season for them. And they're going to continue to take the fight to the Russians. Well, let's talk about one of their defeats. So the fall of Mariupol. Yeah. Um, it, it looks like Russia is concentrating its forces on that coast uh, all the way to the eastern part, uh, the Donetsk region, uh, all of that. So w yeah. what's the significance there of the fall of that city? If you look at that map there, uh, Gordon, you look at Mariupol, it's the second largest port uh, for Ukraine. The first one is Odessa. 60% of all the imports coming into Ukraine coming through Mariupol and Odessa. The fact that they've lost today, they've lost Mariupol, is significant. Uh, also, because, primarily because if you look at it, it gives them that land bridge that the Russians have been wanting since 2014 when they annexed Crimea there at the bottom. They had to basically go through the Black Sea. So today, instead of having to ship, for example, precious water that the Crimeans need, now they just need to have a land bridge going straight from, uh, from Russia all the way down through Mariupol, through Kherson, and down to Crimea. But again, this war is not, it's, it's, we're, we're still in it. And uh, the, the possibility of the Ukrainians continuing to push the Russian out of Kherson and potentially going after Mariupol and other parts of the Donetsk, Donbass region is very, very possible. Well, uh, the, Russia still has a few cards in its deck, and that, and that is nuclear weapons. Sure. Uh, Ukraine doesn't have that. So what's the significance of Russia deploying nuclear weapons on the border of Finland? And in the event that they really start to have even more losses and are in danger of losing Crimea, would they would they actually put tackler tactical nukes and, and, and use them. Yeah. Uh, on the issue of Finland, in the near term, no, because, you know, NATO, in essence, gets two very sophisticated military countries in Sweden and Finland. Both countries have been, uh, you know, buying weapons. I mean, they have the F, the Amer they have, they have the, the Finns have F-35, American F-35 fighter jets on order. They already have the F-18s. They have American defense missiles already deployed. They have even the Israeli Iron Dome uh, deployed. They have about 900,000 uh, reservists, 280,000 of them they can call pretty much on moment's notice. Uh, so, you know, this, this was one of those things where the, where, the, where the Kremlin again miscalculated that in order to, you know, by attacking Ukraine, they will divide, they will conquer, they will put fear in countries like uh, Sweden and Finland. Just the opposite has happened and the morale continues to be high. The nation of Ukraine is united like never before. You know, the thing I kept hearing over and over again, Again, these last three months, Gordon, is this that they are fighting for freedom. You know this. They experienced what it was like to live under a totalitarian regime for 80 plus years when they gained their independence in 1989 and then they got attacked on February 24th. They don't want to go back. They don't want to live the kind of life that the Russians are, uh, are experiencing today. And that is what they're fighting for at the end of the day. Well, last question. Yeah. Uh, how can we pray for Ukraine? How can we pray for the situation? How can we pray for Russia right now? Yeah, good question, especially on Russia. You know, uh, people that I've been speaking to both in uh, Ukraine as well in, as, as well as in Russia, they're saying they're praying for the for a second wall to come down uh, in Russia, that there would be a spiritual awakening that takes place in uh, uh, in Russia. But for the church in Ukraine, they're bold. They're strong. They're continuing to do amazing work. They're uh, all 
hands on deck from every, all levels of society. They've joined together, everybody opening their homes, opening their businesses, their restaurants. I mean, you look at what Orphan's Promise is doing, crisscrossing the entire nation from Lviv all the way to the eastern part of the country. They're opening up their facilities, helping people in their time of need. I saw it, and it was just in, in, incredible to watch in the process. Continue to pray for them that they would have the backbone, they would have the resources to minister to their people in the midst of what's going on. And the incredible news is that three months in, there are more Ukrainians now coming back into the country than those who are fleeing. That is good news for sure. And let me just take this moment, Gordon, to say thank you to the 700 Club family, to the CBN family, and to viewers around the country and around the world who prayed for me these last three months. And those prayers kept me safe, kept me alive, and kept me strong. All right, George. Thanks for the service, and thanks for joining us. You're welcome. In other news today, President Biden visits the victims of the shooting in Buffalo, New York. John Jessup has that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? Thanks, Gordon. And it is good to have George back. Well, First Lady Jill Biden joins the president today, meeting with families grieving the loss of loved ones after that deadly mass shooting in Buffalo. Ten African-Americans died in the attack at the top supermarket Saturday. Authorities say the 18-year-old shooter was motivated by racism and set out to kill black people. And there is new information the shooter spent months planning the attack. ABC News reporting it has obtained a nearly 600-page document showing the assailant visited the grocery store as far back as March and made detailed sketches of the store's layout. He also planned more attacks and listed other targets. Authorities believe the suspect was radicalized by racist ideology on the Internet. Darius Pridgen is the Bishop of Bethel Baptist Church and the president of the Buffalo City Council. Monday, he spoke on CBN's Faith Nation about the church's role in confronting racism in America. We must be honest about the fact that there is there are still white supremacists that live on our land and that there are still people who do not like uh, black people and would rather for them to die. And if we don't have the uncomfortable conversations, even when there is not a mass shooting, we will never be able to stand up against racism. And that, to me, is what we have to do, especially those of us who say we believe in Jesus Christ. Um, you know, I keep saying it's hard to talk about Jesus if you don't talk about justice. And at the end of the day, this is a time to talk about justice. The FBI is investigating the attack as a hate crime. Well, in California, church members came together to mourn for those killed in Buffalo and for the man killed in a shooting at Geneva Presbyterian Church in Laguna Woods on Sunday. Five others were injured in the attack on members of a Taiwanese congregation that meets at the church. Authorities say that shooting had political motivations. The suspect, 68-year-old David Chu, was reportedly upset about political tensions between China and Taiwan. One man, Dr. John Chang, was killed, the sheriff calling him a hero. Dr. Chang charged the individual, the suspect, attempted to disarm him. The sheriff and Chang said, rather, Chang's actions probably saved the lives of upwards of dozens of people. The congregation's pastor also jumped in, hitting the shooter with a chair. Gordon, some quick life-saving thinking there. Very quick thinking, and uh, we thank God for the lives that were saved by that quick thinking. But we need to underline, thou shalt not kill. This is, we've, we seem to have unleashed this spirit of violence and you, you can date it all the way back to Columbine. What is going on in our nation where people are being radicalized and they somehow think they're doing society a favor by killing people? Going into churches and saying, well, I don't like the tension between Taiwan and China, so I'm going to kill you. Uh, going to a supermarket saying, I'm gonna kill you because of the color of your skin. This is unbelievable. It should never happen in our country. We need to pray that that which restrains is restored to us, that we have safety in our grocery stores, we have safety in our schools, we have safety in our churches and our synagogues. These hate crimes absolutely have to stop. Terry? Well, coming up next, a sobering new poll about religion in America. 
Fewer and fewer preteens have a biblical worldview. Stay tuned to find out how parents can reverse this troubling trend. And then later, her husband was on life support. His doctor said that she should pull the plug. See why this wife refused and hear the prayer that brought her husband back from the brink. Sixty-seven percent of American parents with preteens identify as Christian. Of that number, unfortunately, only two percent actually possess a biblical worldview. Brody Carter brings us the details of a new study that should be a wake-up call for the church. Most of the parents of young children in America today, if they were to die today, probably would not wind up in heaven. It's a bold statement stemming from a study led by esteemed Christian researcher Dr. George Barna. It suggests American parents are experiencing a dilemma. Most people die with the same worldview in essence that they had at the age of 13. That's why Barna is concerned in stressing the importance of sharing a Christian worldview with children. The study found while 67 percent of American parents with preteens identify as Christian, only 2% actually possess a biblical worldview. They don't believe the Bible is reliable or true or relevant to their lives. They don't have the same view of God as is given to us in the Bible. I mean, it's very sobering uh, from a Christian perspective and a Christian worldview. It, it, it's sad, yet it's not uh, a surprise. The numbers show only 1% of this parent group in Catholic and mainline Protestant churches have a biblical worldview, compared to just 9% in evangelical, charismatic, and non-denominational churches. It's been on the decline for more than 25 years now, and it's getting down into the very low single digits with each succeeding adult generation. As millennial parents become the majority, Barna worries those numbers could get worse, as they're seen as being least likely to have and share a Christian lens. This is a generation that needs a lot of attention and a lot of help. They don't respond well to somebody saying what the Bible says mm. or trying to force biblical principles upon them. What they do relate better to are conversations, non-judgmental, non-threatening conversations. The study points to a number of reasons for this result, including no-fault divorce, secularization of news, art, and entertainment. It adds that public schools and governmental laws foster a culture where wisdom and biblical truth have little room to grow. Really, culture has done a great job of messaging the fact that, hey, let's just live free and limitless and, and let's just be happy. You have the right for things for yourself. And we've created ultimately a really consumer focused culture. Dr. And Danny Huerta with Focus the on the Family is dedicated to helping families know and grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. This is an opportunity, a wake up call for the church to uh, make sure we're teaching the, the truth in Scripture and going back to that, to the principles and believing everything that the Word of God says is true. No one has disproved it to be wrong. For parents who feel like they're falling short in this area, Huerta recommends to intentionally enter faith-based conversations with your kids, learn what biblical boundaries look like, and implement them. And he adds, it's going to take practice. So a book I wrote is Seven Traits of Effective Parenting, and that's based off of research on what a parent can focus in on rather than trying to control a child or trying to uh, take ownership of, of a child's behaviors. It's about influence, and that begins with you. Does that mean that Christianity is going to go away in American culture? And to make that argument, you would have to believe that God has given up on America. And yet the reality is we have a remnant of about 15 million adults across the country who possess a biblical worldview. That's a huge remnant. So God could certainly use them to turn around this culture. Brody Carter, CBN News. Uh, let me underline, God's not done with America yet. He honors the covenants that were made. The Mayflower Compact was not a compact with the people on that boat. It was a compact with God Almighty. And we need to recognize that. When the first settlers landed right here on the shores of Virginia Beach over 400 years ago, they had brought a cross with them uh, across that long voyage. They, they so wanted to have their first act 
be to plant a cross and dedicate this land to Jesus Christ. When they arrived and they anchored their chaplain, they brought a chaplain with them. The chaplain said, you guys have been fighting this whole voyage. We're, we're not spiritually ready to do this. And so he ordered, he had the authority and power, he ordered fasting and prayer and repentance and forgiveness be the order of day. And when he was satisfied that their spiritual life was in order, then okay, now you can go to land and now we can bow together in the sand and raise a cross and pray and ask that Jesus be Lord over this country. God will honor that. He will honor those prayers. He will honor those covenants. What is he looking for? He's looking for the people who are called by his name. He's not looking for the unbelievers. He is looking for you and I to say, well, let's do exactly what that chaplain asked those people on board that ship to do. Let's repent. Let's turn to him. Let's leave all of our evil ways and come before him and say, Lord, have mercy on our land. If we do that, he will heal us and he will restore us. I've got some other news for you in addition to that prayer. Let's make time for Bible study for our children. If you have children between the ages of six and 12, it's a great time to teach them the Bible. And I've got a very free way for you to do it. All you have to do is download the Superbook app. It will go on any tablet, any smartphone. Uh, any smart TV, you can get the stories of the Bible in a way that children will understand. Uh, when the Bible characters are talking, they're talking directly from the Bible. So your whole family can develop a biblical worldview. And the best part of all, it's absolutely free. All you have to do is go to any, any one of the online stores that sells apps, and you can download the Superbook Bible app. We also have a curriculum that goes with it if you want to do more on the theology of the episodes, the archaeology of the episodes. It's all free. Isn't that wonderful? So to get it, go to superbook.cbn.com slash app or any one of the stores, Apple Store, Google Play, Amazon. They're all available. And I'll underline it's free. Terry? Doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> well, coming up next, buried in debt, forced to move back in with her parents, Hear the investment tip that helped this young woman land a 30%, a 30% raise at work twice. Then later, she lived in her town for 60 years and she never saw a disaster like the tornado that crossed right over her house. See the unbelievable miracle that made her home better than ever after this. Julie thought she was winning in life. Then she found out she was losing her job. Months went by and her prospects were bleak. Well, that's when Julie prayed. And not only has she never missed a paycheck, she's also paid off all her debts. When Julie Hainline graduated from college, her dream was to own a business. But starting out, she had a low paying job and $37,000 in debt she had to pay including student loans, credit cards, and a car loan. She moved in with her parents to save money and put herself on a tight budget. I basically just cut everything out. I'm so blessed by my parents because this really helped me pay off a ton of debt. After a few months, Julie landed a better paying job and moved out on her own. She also started attending church where she rededicated her life to Jesus Christ. And that's when she learned about tithing. It says in his word that we are to give him the 10% and to trust him and to test him in this. You know, it does build my relationship with God because it is hard. You know, I'm like, God, like, I need this money to pay off my credit cards. But, you know, if that's what you say in your word, then I'll do it. Soon, she began seeing God work on her behalf. Within two years, she was offered a job with the Chiquita Brands Company. The position came with a 30% increase in pay. I just remember feeling real excited and God has just given me a lot of favor. She quickly became a top performer and a year later received a 35% raise. As Julie continued to tithe, she earned several bonuses and raises. Within three years, she paid off her student loans and all of her credit card debt. Now with only her car note remaining, 
She became interested in real estate and bought her first house with the intent to eventually rent it out. I just felt, felt really blessed that like I could buy a house. That's when I really felt like an adult and like that I was like winning in life. Three years later, her company was bought out. Julie was going to lose her job and only had three months to find another one. Her search went on for weeks with no job in sight. Still, she continued to give. I kept being faithful and I kept tithing because that's what God told me to do. Julie was down to her last week at work and it wasn't looking like she was going to find a job. Frustrated, she began praying. Then she remembered a passage from Matthew 6, 34. That was a really special moment with me and God and just trusting that, hey, I have you. Like, I care about these birds and the flowers and all these things, and I take care of them and I feed them, so how much more do I care about you? With just a few days remaining, God blessed Julie with another well-paying job. I had a feeling he would show up at the last minute, and he did. Julie's income continued to increase along with her real estate portfolio. That was all God because I wanted one rental and then I got three. Like it still to this day like amazes me. In 2020, Julie felt led to start her own business, coaching and mentoring through social media. She sold one of her houses and paid off the rest of her debt. She has no debt other than the mortgages covered by her tenants. Julie believes that all of her success is because of her commitment to tithing. It's so important to tithe because, you know, that's what God tells us to do. And the 10% doesn't even touch what he's done for me. Here's the promise from Deuteronomy chapter 30. Love the Lord your God, walk in his ways and keep his commands. Then you will live and increase and the Lord your God will bless you. Julie walked that out. She said, I'm going to let God be first. I'm going to love him. I'm going to walk in his ways. I'm going to keep his commands. And one of his commands is give, give, and it will be given unto you. It's an abundant blessing that comes your way when you just honor God with your first fruits. You honor him with your tithes, your offerings. You say, I want to be a giver. I want to be generous. I want to be cheerful in my giving. When you do that, what you're reflecting is Him. For God so loved the world that He gave. It's part of the gospel. It's part of what Christians do. We love giving, and we love helping people, and we love being there for their time of need to say, God loves you, we love you, we're going to see you through. If you want to start a lifestyle of that and saying, you know, I, I want to preach the gospel around the world. I want to help people around the world. I want to help refugees in Ukraine. I want to help disaster victims right here in the United States. I want to help people get enough food to eat right here in the United States. You're a part of all of it when you join the 700 Club. How much is that? It's just $20 a month, 65 cents a day. Some of you can join at higher levels. We have $40 a month. We also have a thousand club, which is $84 a month. Uh, that adds up to a thousand dollars over the course of a year. And when you join at these levels, we want to send you the, my father's latest teaching. Now, when you join at 700 club gold, we'll send you three copies. When you join at a thousand club, $84 a month, we'll send you five copies. And it's putting on the armor of God. It takes you through the book of Ephesians and shows you how to wage spiritual warfare. All these weapons are having to do with spiritual warfare. We can't deal against Satan unless we understand the fullness of the gospel. There will be fiery darts coming at you. All this armor of God is so important to the Christian to stand fast against the devil's wiles. Get Pat's new audio recording, Putting on the Armor of God, available now. Bertha's house was directly in the path of a vicious tornado. One side was torn up and the roof was blown wide open. Water and debris were everywhere. Bertha didn't think that her house was salvageable. Then Operation Blessing came on the scene, and now Bertha's house is better than ever. Bertha Bilbrey is a widow who has been living in Russellville, Kentucky for 60 years. A lot of memories. It kind of makes you choke up with sometimes. People don't know what they've got. 
can't believe she. She was taking shelter with her daughter when an EF3 tornado went right over her house. It was scary. I didn't know if we'd have a house. When I come back, it was a mess. They just tore one side all up, broke the windows out, and it blowed the roof off of the front part of it. And the rest of it had holes in it where the water was coming through down the walls and everything. I didn't think it could be fixed. I'll be honest, I, I just thought it was, you know, it was gone. But when an Operation Blessing team found out about Bertha, we knew we had to help her. The Ruth was in such a bad shape. They fixed that, and then they went to getting the floor and tore out for somebody to come in and get it fixed for you. That is a miracle. From there, we replaced the windows, flooring, and cabinets, and repaired the walls. Then we brought in new furniture to replace what had been damaged. Bertha couldn't believe the transformation. It just felt real good. They come in and fixed it, made it look new again. But it looks better than it did. You can't tell it. Anything that happened to it, it looks so nice. I didn't think it ever could be fixed that way. It's just unbelievable. She says she's grateful to everyone who generously gave to Operation Blessing and made it all possible. They've been good people. I want to thank everybody for doing what they did, fixing everything, and y'all have really done great wonders to this house. Now, when disaster strikes anywhere, everybody's impacted by it. But when you're older and you're all alone and you don't even know what to do to try to begin any kind of restoration of any kind, you're, I mean, you really are just left without hope in the middle of that situation. If I had to say there's one thing that 700 club members bring to everything that we do, it's hope. Hope in the midst of disaster, of destruction, of all kinds of issues that happen in people's lives. You're a part of that, 700 Club members. Thank you. You're the ones who help us bring the light right into the middle of somebody else's darkness. If you're not a 700 Club member, what an opportunity you are missing out on because you can truly touch people's lives, not just in a practical way like you just saw Bertha's home happen, but also spiritually. Everybody there is bringing the love of Jesus to what they do. 65 cents a day, $20 a month makes you a 700 Club member. So if you haven't joined, come along with the rest of us. There are thousands of us, and we are linked together to touch the world with the love of Jesus. You be a part of that, too. Maybe you already are a general member. Would you consider going up to 700 Club Gold? Because it makes a huge difference. That's a gift of $40 a month. Gordon was just telling you about some of the other club levels. There's the 1,000 Club, that's that's $84 a month, or the 2,500 Club at $209 a month. Ask God what he'd have you do, and then call now. Because every day, both here in the United States and around the world, people find themselves in hopelessness, and we get to carry the light to them. So will you call 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. We're going to send you Pat's teaching on putting on the armor of God. We think it'll bless you and make a difference in your life. We want you to have it. So call now. Gordon? Well, here's something you don't normally hear from a four-year-old. Brandon says his favorite things to do at home are taking a bath and brushing his teeth. The reason? For the first time in his life, he has access to clean water. Every day, Jonathan and his two brothers walk to the river near their home in southern Mexico to collect water. Unfortunately, that water is not safe to drink. I drank water from the river and it made me sick. There was no water at our house. This is Jonathan's mom, Teresa. She explained why the river water is so dangerous. We washed our dishes and our clothes in the river, and we even took baths in the river. At first, I thought my kids got sick from the weather or bad food. Then, I figured out that it was the raw river water that was hurting them. They couldn't go to school. They just wanted to stay in bed, and they wouldn't eat. They didn't even want to play. 
Operation Blessing built the community a new water system. We laid pipe to transport water from an underground stream to a new tank we built within the community. This is the children's father, Gilberto. Now we no longer have to carry water. We have plenty now. It has been a big weight lifted off me. Now I don't get stomach pains from drinking the bad water. And this is four-year-old Brandon. I can drink water at home. My favorite thing to do is take a bath and brush my teeth. Our children don't get sick anymore. Thank you, Operation Blessing, because now the water is clean and safe. Yeah, you can be a part of giving clean water to people. You can be a part of providing special surgeries for them. You can be a part of helping them with livelihood programs, with disaster relief, with feeding programs. It's all made possible because people like you say, yes, I want to make a difference. A portion of every gift to the 700 Club goes into the work of Operation Blessing to help people and do it very tangibly. Both here in the United States and around the world, you're a part of all of it when you join the 700 Club. If you're not a member, I encourage you to call us and join. 1-800-700-7000. If you are a member, consider increasing. Consider going to 700 Club Gold at $40 a month. 1,000 Club, $84 a month. And when you join at those higher levels, we'll send you three copies at 700 Club Gold of my father's latest teaching, The Armor of God. If you join at 1,000 Club, you'll get five copies. Now, when you call, make sure you ask for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving. Bank doing all the work. You can also go on to CBN.com when you give monthly on the Internet. Uh, you automatically sign up for Pledge Express. Or you can text us. We have a new text to give. Text CBN to 71777. Now, when you join Pledge Express, we send you monthly teaching CDs or downloads, your choice. Uh, and it's, it's all part of that wonderful Pledge Express program where there's no checks to write, there's no, nothing to mail in. Your gift comes in automatically every single month. So if you'd like it, ask for Pledge Express when you call 1-800-700-7000. Now, 700 Club partners will receive a copy of my father's new teaching, Putting on the Armor of God. This download from my father takes you through the book of Ephesians, it will help you discover how to have God's power and protection over your life. CBN presents Putting on the Armor of God, a brand new audio recording by Pat Robertson. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. Become a CBN partner. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to receive your copy of Putting on the Armor of God, available now. The Apostle Paul's letter to the Ephesians is one of the greatest books in the entire Bible. He tells us who we are in Christ and how to live victoriously in the world today. CBN presents Putting on the Armor of God, a brand new audio recording by Pat Robertson. It will give you an understanding of your relationship with God, and it will guide you in your relationships with your spouse, your children, your co-workers, and other Christians. Be encouraged as you listen to Pat's reading of the book of Ephesians. I pray the Lord will bless you as you listen to his word, and that you will grow in the knowledge of his love, his power, and his plan for you. Become a CBN partner. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to receive your copy of Putting on the Armor of God. Coming up later, a patient slips into a coma. At that point, I had passed out. As bile builds up in his lungs, they had removed nine and a half liters of bile. See the recovery his doctors say shows the power of prayer. There's no reason why Jeff is still walking this earth.
Welcome back to Washington for the CBN News Break. America's death toll from COVID hit 1 million on Monday. The country meeting that grim milestone two and a half years into the pandemic. 75% of those who succumbed to the disease were 65 and older. White people made up most of the deaths overall, but blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans have been twice as likely to die from the virus. Also, COVID killed more men than women. The total number of deaths from COVID is estimated to be much higher than the official statistics. Well, the FDA is stepping in to ease the shortage of baby formula in America. The agency reaching an agreement with Abbott Labs to restart production at its largest factory. The factory had been shut down for what the FDA called unsanitary conditions. The company stating that an investigation found no conclusive evidence its products was linked to any infant illnesses. Abbott says it will take two weeks to get the factory up and running again and another six to eight weeks before formula reaches store shelves. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Gordon and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. pneumonia, nausea, and the heart arrhythmia. Jeff Blackwell suffered from these conditions and more, all at the same time. Shortly after arriving in the hospital, Jeff fell into a coma, and that's when his family and friends put out an urgent call for prayer. Uh, it may be mostly cloudy on the outside, but the sun shines shining through on the inside. So uh, let your light shine today. Here on Jeff Blackwell has side. been a beloved on-air talent for Catholic Community Radio in Baton Rouge for many years. But in 2020, Jeff was in a fight for his life. After going to dinner with his wife, Diane, he became violently ill. I knew I was sick. I had never felt that bad before in my life. I, I couldn't hold anything down. And I finally told my wife, I've got to go to the ER. I just can't, I can't handle it. Jeff was then admitted to a local hospital. He was later transferred to ICU, where his stomach issues persisted. The amount of bile my stomach was producing was through the roof. Uh, in fact, they had uh, uh, removed nine and a half liters of bile. Jeff was then prepped for a routine CT scan that went horribly wrong. I got very nauseous and I told the technician, I said, I'm about to throw up, you need to get me out of here. Before they could even start backing the table, I aspirated bile into my lungs. Technicians saying, grab the, the crash cart. I mean, they started shoving tubes down my throat. At that point, I had passed out. The aspiration resulted in a spiral effect that had Jeff's family concerned for his life. He had issues with his heart rate being able to stay in the correct rhythm. It was uh, kind of bouncing all over the place, and so they needed medications to manage that. Uh, he was on medications, uh, you know, for the pneumonia. Nausea and vomiting, uh, which then led to the aspiration pneumonia uh, event, and uh, those certainly can be very fatal. My heart went into AFib. My kidneys started shutting down. My liver had become compromised. My um, uh, lungs have become ulcerated, I had pneumonia, and it was just almost hopeless at that point. He was so dehydrated, his potassium levels were so low at that point that his body was actually, you know, like really too sick to really handle his lungs being burnt at that point. As Jeff's condition worsened, Diane contacted David Dawson, president of Catholic Community Radio who then informed their listeners. We had a pretty big prayer line going. I mean, it grew and grew every day. A lot of people knew Jeff, and not a, a lot of folks loved Jeff, and, and the business that we're in, it, it just kept growing. So we just kept passing it down the line. Every time she say, this is a great day, it's like, great, we're gonna, we're gonna keep praying, we're gonna pull him through. Or this is a bad day, it's like, well then tell us exactly what to pray for. In my mind, I couldn't be trusting God and looking for the doctors at the same time because my trust was in God to heal him. Jeff slipped into a coma and was put on life support. Diane continued to believe for his healing. As she was praying in the hospital chapel, a book caught her attention. When I opened it, it opened immediately to the page where it's the, it's the woman that uh, in the Bible, she was hemorrhaging and she was like, if I could just touch on Jesus's uh, cloak, then I'll be healed and it's like, Lord, 
You worked a miracle for her with just a simple touch. So work that same miracle for Jeff. At one point, doctors told Diane she may want to think about making funeral arrangements. The doctor came in and just showed me some x-rays and said his lungs are bad again. It's filling up again. And so you need to call family in and you'll need to decide if y'all want to um, pull the plug on him. My son-in-law made a comment like, hey, Mr. Jeff, you got to get out of here so we can barbecue. And Jeff gave just the tiniest little smirk. You could see it. And I looked at them and I said, you saw it? And they said, yeah. So I was like, no, we can't let him go. Diane uh, is a very, very strong, strong, strong woman. She wasn't going to take no for an answer. After several weeks in ICU and a coma, Jeff woke up. I had no idea how long I had been in the hospital. And when I came to, the very first thought I had in my mind was, people are praying for me. I just knew it. Doctors finally found the source of his original illness, a kink in his intestine. It wasn't until a month after that I took care of it with, through emergency surgery. Although he had more challenges to overcome, Jeff eventually made a full recovery. Today he is healthy and back on the air at Catholic Community Radio. The power of prayer, it's real. He had a group of prayer warriors praying for him to get him through that, to give him the strength. I think that played an immense part in his recovery. By the way, coming up, uh, leaving later in the hour. It's really remarkable. Uh, people old. still to yes. this day will say, I was praying for you when you were sick. I heard about that. I was just amazed at the fact that God actually blessed me with a total miracle that I got to witness it with my own eyes. There's no reason why Jeff is still walking this earth. There's no reason for that. He had too many strikes against him. From the world standpoint, uh, there was no hope. However, that trust in God, which is far deeper than, you know, a commitment than I can even explain, to be able to say, Father, I trust you. I trust you with my life. And, and let go and let God. It's that trust, that childlike faith that says, God, I'm just going to let go and trust you, that moves the hand of the Father. Listen, today we want to pray for you. We have some time left in the program, and I know many of you wait for this segment of the show. And so without ado, I'm going to tell you about <laughs> Esther, who lives in Ontario, California. Six years ago, she took a terrible fall, landed on concrete, which left her with a fractured left shoulder. It never did completely heal, so she lived with chronic pain. She was watching this program recently. Esther heard you, Gordon, say someone has problems in the left shoulder. You are in so much pain. You're feeling electricity right now, and your shoulder is being healed. Esther claimed that healing, and now all her pain has gone away after six years. All right. Here is 91-year young Lynn from Palm Springs, Virginia. I'm at Palm Springs, California. She suffered a skin issue for a year. She clearly remembers how several months ago, Terry prayed for someone with psoriasis, and Lynn hoped she would be healed after that, but her rash it didn't disappear. And then a few months later, Lynn watching this show, Terry said someone has, been, uh, someone has an inexplicable inexplic rash that's been spreading on your body. You've been to a doctor, and it's not any known disease. It won't go away. God's beginning to heal that right now. It will disappear. Well, by faith, Lynn believed, and she is completely and fully healed. Let God work a miracle for you today. Realize he wants to. Realize he loves you, and he cares tenderly for you. You heard Jeff say it. When I let go, then I let God. Now, you can say that. You can, you can, we've got that phrase, let go and let go. But it's very hard when you're in the middle of it to let go. We always want to insist on some kind of right. And I've lived through it. When I had cerebral malaria, I was naming it and claiming it. And, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to get up enough faith to do all this. It was when I surrendered to him that the miracle came. Surrender to him. Let him care for you. You, you know, it, 
it, it's, it's hard to do. I realize that. I realize just how hard it is to say, no matter what happens to me, I, I trust you. I trust your love for me. I trust what you're working in my life. I trust that you're going to work all things together for my good. I just trust you. I, I give it all to you. That's hard. But when you do it, boy, it gets easy. Do it. Let's do it right now and let God take over. And when he takes over and his kingdom comes, then his will will be done in your body. Let's pray and let's believe and let's let God do what God do, does the best. He does miracles. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you. We come to you believing. We come to you trusting, relying leaning into your infinite love for us. We just are amazed how much you love us. For while we were sinners, you died. You gave yourself for us. This is amazing. So Lord, we give ourselves to you. We surrender all. Not our will be done, but let your will be done in our bodies, in our lives. Stretch forth your hand to heal us, to set us free, to deliver us from all sin, anything that would be an obstacle for you. Come into our hearts, come into our bodies. We ask it now, in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, there's a woman named Marjorie. You suffer with uh, cluster headaches, uh, migraine headaches. God is healing you. He's just lifting that pain away from you. They're never going to return. He has come that you might have that abundant life. He's giving it to you right now. Tara? Yeah, there's someone else. You have a problem with it. It's like a little tumor at the base of your spine. You've had the tumor for a while, but it's started to grow, and there are all kinds of negative projections about your future. Don't buy that. The God who told the sea where to stop is going to tell that tumor to stop, and you're going to be fine in Jesus' name. Uh, there's someone with stage 4 cancer. God's heard your cry. He's healing you right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Here's a word from James. Pray for each other that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective.